One of the most perplexing concepts of the Christian faith to non-Christians is the Christian view of suffering. The idea that suffering is redemptive and the road to salvation. Even for many Christians, the belief that suffering can be good for you is hard to accept. To help us achieve a better understanding of the role of suffering in the spiritual life of Christians, I visited Metropolitan Anthony of the Russian Orthodox Church in England. Whenever we move from this concern about men onto concerns about things, we make things, it may be ideals, ideologies, um, world outlooks into an idol, and there is no idol that doesn't claim blood. And blood is always human blood. It will always be men and women and children who will have to pay the cost of it. Metropolitan Anthony, a convert to Christianity, began his professional life as a medical doctor in France. He served with the French army during the Second World War and is a man not unfamiliar with suffering. In their service, is the notion that suffering is redemptive unique to the Christian faith? Yes. Well, for one thing, uh, in itself, suffering is not redemptive. Suffering is redemptive only if it is connected with love and when the suffering is a result of giving one's life or giving something of oneself in itself. Suffering as such may be a curse and the hell without any issue out of it. But I think that this being said, it is true that suffering when endured in the name of love, for the sake of love, ultimately for the sake of God and of men in a personal way, is redemptive. And I think uh, it is only in Christianity that it has all this fullness, because I believe that only in Christianity has history and the physical world a complete significance. Do you think the Church has always made this clear? Well, St. Paul, I think, made it uh, extremely clear when he said that if we do not suffer the right way, we, uh, we suffer in vain. And also in uh, the Epistle to Co the Corinthians, when he speaks of love and says that even if I gave my body to be burnt, mm -hmm. but had no love, it would be vain and empty. I think it is the love that makes, uh, gives meaning to the suffering. Otherwise, it's a purely physical event. And what? It's just that I have a feeling that many people have missed that particular point and that they feel they can reach salvation through suffering. I think you are right. Um, I think lots of people miss this point and many other points indeed in the gospel and in life in general because it's much easier to work out of um, to work out a world outlook in which enduring suffering is meaningful than to say to endure suffering is nothing if I do not love and loving is infinitely more difficult than enduring. Enduring is a passive state. Once suffering is inflicted, it takes courage, determination uh, to undergo it. While to love does not mean undergo. It means volunteer. It means take upon oneself. It means give what is not claimed. And that is a much more difficult thing. But I suppose there are people, though, that seem to relish suffering. Perhaps they suffer from inferiority complexes or from guilt or some reason. And, and of course. But uh, then that is not religion, even less Christianity. It's on the verge 
of mental disorder, uh, sadism, masochism, the sort of nursing of the sense of guilt and of remorse, of course exist among Christians as well as among others. But this is pathology. Mm -hmm. But at the heart of the gospel, we find love and equality of love, which is such denial of self that will allow freely to lay down one's life, freely to undergo suffering, freely to substitute eventually one's own death to someone else's death. Theologically, we speak more of Christ in this connection. But in the history of the last century, we have so many examples of people who have chosen to give their lives, chosen to die, in order to save another person. And when you choose to die, you may very well not die and remain a cripple, be an invalid, suffer a great deal, which in a way is a risk much more uh, painful to take than just sudden annihilation. I did an interview last year with Elie Wiesel, the Jewish author for Man Alive, and he's contradicted the Christian notion of suffering. He said, for example, that in the Jewish faith, the life uh, of suffering is completely alien to what they believe. Life should be celebration, should be joy, and suffering had no redemptive power as far as he was concerned. Well, I think it's difficult to um, uphold this view completely in the face, for instance, of the uh, image of the suffering servant in the book of Isaiah and of quite a few other passages from the Old Testament. I think that he is right when he says that life should be a celebration, but then life should not be marred by the condition of men in which we live. Ideally, yes, it should be celebration, but in the face of a world of disharmony, of hatred, of mutual antagonism, of contrast and opposition, then suffering is inevitable, is a fact. And it can be turned into a redemptive experience.